So welcome everyone to the very first edition of our T2 interview session. And today we have a very special guest with us and it will be none other than Sharaf Kamal. Sharaf, you want to say hi to everyone? Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, T2 team. Uh, it's really fun to be here and I hope uh, we can have a good session today. Yes, yes. I'm sure it will be very fun. And you're looking really, really good today, Sharaf. Uh, can you just maybe <laughs> update us? Where are you right now and what are you doing with, um, with maybe competition preparation or anything? Yeah, um, uh, I'm currently now in India, in my hometown. Uh, it's called Chennai in the southern part. Um, I've been here predominantly over the last almost one and a half years because since uh, March 2020, I haven't gone abroad for practice. Uh, I've went uh, for a few tournaments, Middle East Hub in March, Olympic qualifiers uh, in March 2021, and then Olympic Games and the Asian Championships at Doha uh, in September. So these are this is this is as much as I've traveled abroad uh, for some matches. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward for the forthcoming weekends weeks where uh, we'll be going to Tunisia, Slovenia, two tournaments in Slovenia with the WTT Contender tournaments, and then following it on with the World Championships in Houston. So that's something which you know, uh, it's really nice. Going first thing is the World Championships. You know, after a break of of a year, uh, getting back into some major tournament. And the second thing for me uh, personally, going to the US after nearly four or five years now. So last time I played there was in 2017 or 2018. So it's always very nice to get to the US, and the spectators are, are very friendly, and you know, you have a lot of fun playing there. I can look at your competition calendar. It's gonna be really really busy for you for the next few months but thank you so much for setting some time aside for us today great great well look without further ado um we're just gonna get into this special segment called the t2 hot seat all right and what this is um for those of you who do not know what this is about this is going to be a very special segment where we are going to throw as many random questions involving general knowledge questions or maybe table tennis related questions um to our participant and today we have Sharaf Kamal. With us um, in 60 seconds, he will have to answer as many questions as he can. And if he, if he get any of the answers right, it will be worth one point. But in the final 24 seconds, all right, it will be worth two points. And obviously, Sharaf, you, you feel free to skip the questions if you do not know what it is, or just answer mm -hmm. it however you think it is. We will just tell you the score at the end of the day. Are you all Perfect. good? Yes, yes. Great, great. Well, yes. without further ado, we will get onto it. I'm just gonna set my timer ready over here and we can get going. But basically, take it easy, Sharaf. No pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably just the first contestant that we are uh, doing this for. We will have many athletes to interview as well and they will be going through uh, this mini segment that we call T2 Hot Seat. That's great, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, so it will be really fun. All right, without further ado, uh, we will start it, okay? All right. How many Olympic medals does Timo Ball have? Wow. Uh, I have time to. Oh, I'm wasting time. Yeah. Okay. You can you can skip if you do not know. We can answer your question. Oh, four, four. Four, All right. Four, four. How many hours are there in a day? Twenty-four. According to Google, how many people are there in the world as of twenty twenty? Next one. Which country has the most islands in the world? Uh, Very close Japan? to... Okay. How many islands does Sweden have? Mm, no, no idea. All right. Who came in second for the Tokyo 2020 te Table Tennis Olympic Gold Medals men's team? Men's team, uh, Germany. All right, that's it. That is all. Well, look, thank you so much for playing that segment. I really caught you off guard with some of the questions that I have. Um, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> you, you did pretty well. I can say you did pretty well. But but look, it was only one minute. Okay. Okay. It was really, really hard. Um, yeah. So... The, the first question took me a long time. Yeah, 2008, 2012. Uh, yeah, 16 and 18. Yeah, 20, 21. Yeah. Is that, we'll, we'll tell you the, the result at the end of the day. But look, I think you did pretty not bad. Um, okay. Obviously, yeah. we will put you in like a virtual leaderboard. 
And yeah, hopefully you'll be able to compete with all the other players. Do, do, do I get a prize to be first on the leaderboard? Yeah, if you are maybe <laughs> the top few, we will get you some prizes. Yeah, good, but man. all right, cool, cool stuff. Well, thank you so much for playing the game with us. Um, right now, I'm just going to really, you know, we can talk more about, I guess, where we're at in life. But really, I just want to know more about you as a player as well. And I believe the fans around the world, uh, we really want to get to know you a bit more. So uh, mm. just, just a really quick, um, you know, question I guess I'm going to throw at you is that, you know, if you were to have any superpower in the world, like what would it be and like why would you choose that? Yeah, as I'm saying, um, there are a lot of uh, superheroes whom I look up to, you know, typical boy stuff. But then Batman is one uh, superhero without much of superpowers. He's, he's still there, you know, just because... He has those gadgets and he's rich. So I wish I could be like that. You're just talking to me and I just vanish into thin air. <laughs> yeah, that would be a very good skill to have in table tennis as well. I think yes. <laughs> yes, if I, if I could move that fast, it's, it's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yes, that's right. And I guess like, I don't know about you, but like, I guess Batman kind of doesn't really have any superpower. Like he's just really mm. athletic. He just really yeah. he knows all the martial arts in the world. But... If there's one superpower I can think of, I think he's just really, really rich, right? <laughs> yes, I, I wish I, I had, all of us have the superpower where we're just rich. <laughs> yeah, it will be great if we were all rich, like, um, I guess, Bruce Wayne or Batman in yeah. this matter. Uh, but yeah, that, that's really cool. And, you know, I, I was just, you know, looking through some of the older videos of you playing table tennis. And I, I remember always call, remember seeing you with really long hair. And mm. then you always had that bandana around you, you know, and I mm. think after a while, it kind of caught on to a lot of fans out there that you're the guy in table tennis with the bandana on. Could you tell me more about like what, what happened to your long hair and maybe like why do you start wearing that bandana as well? Thanks for reminding that I'm getting old. Basically, the long hair is falling off, <laughs> so I have to I have to cut my hair short. Um, I would I would any day love to go back to that hairstyle, but uh, yeah, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> hair, I've had some problems uh, with my hair. Um, well, um, you still look great, kid, by the way. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, as a as a young kid, uh, when I was growing up. Uh, at that point in time, you know, uh, tennis stars always had that uh, had that look, long hair and bandana, and a lot of you know at that point in time, having long hair was was fashionable. So I also tried it out, and it was uh, it was quite uh, good. But I think the most important point was in 2006 when I won the Commonwealth uh, Games uh, gold medal there. Then people started to uh, relate table tennis with the guy with the long hair and the bandana. Yeah. So the bandana became a, an identity for Sharad Kamal and Sharad Kamal became an identity for table tennis. So, uh, so I, until date, I still continue to have the bandana, you know, because that's, that is how people remember me. And I, I, yeah, that is the game. Uh, let's say the game face I have. So with the yeah. bandana is always the pictures I have while playing a match. So I think until I retire, I will I will continue to go on, even if I go bald. <laughs> That's great. And you know, I, I really love the look of the bandana as well, because you're kind of getting like a name, like what you said, like a name for yourself. Mm. People mm. is calling you like, oh, he's the dude with the bandana. And I think people, maybe I think some players are probably following that look as well. You might be a trendsetter, mm. you know, you're starting yeah. a new trend and a new fashion in table tennis. And that's awesome. Uh, I, I think that's necessary for the sport because you you have different kinds of characters, different styles, different you know uh, different things people can relate to. So yeah. of course it's it's the game style, it's it's the way you behave on court, it's the way you play on court, all that is good. But also these these few things can add up a little bit more spice into you know uh, the the sport. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and that's that's really great. And if you have to choose like maybe any color or do you have like a favorite color that you normally wear for your bandana or is it always uh, the same generally, color? Generally, generally I try to match it with the t-shirt I'm wearing. So uh, many times it's like uh, India's national color is blue. So we mm. have a lot of blues. So I have a lot of bandanas which are different shades of blues. Yeah. So 
uh, but still, I think uh, in most of the pictures, when you when you look at it, I'll be wearing red. Because red is something you know, which is a little bit more fierce and fierce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. You blue might you might more, intimidate your opponent. Yeah, yeah. Blue is more subtle, and you know, it's just steady, it easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. Well, I guess something else that I want to know more about you as well is like you know, growing up, you know, in India. Mm -hmm. You know that there's i guess a lot of different sports that goes on in, in there as well with mm. like you know cricket and hockey but i just want to know like the from table tennis do you play any other sports at all well uh while i was in school uh my my games teacher yeah um yep. he always put me on the volleyball team because just because i was tall I, <laughs> I i don't have major skills but just that he always thought i, I was tall athletic so i could jump and just defend what the opponents are doing uh, so that was you know something what i was playing in school a uh, little bit at a competitive level but apart from mm. that playing cricket or playing football was more with um, uh, friends and you know uh, on fitness points of view yeah. and recently off late i have been playing a lot of squash and bat badminton uh, on because i i feel that it's helping me to stay fit with regards to table tennis because the movements of squash you know squash is almost like a never ending game uh, because you can miss the ball only if you're not physically fit and mm -hmm. if you're fit you can get every ball so that is actually helping me stay fit in in table tennis also at the same time badminton is something which uh, india is slowly growing up on now and a lot of people like to play and it's also fun for me so i like to play multi sport because i feel uh there's a lot more uh different muscle groups that that help me work on develop on yeah because i've been playing table tennis it's the same action and the, the table tennis being once i'm a right hander so only one part of the muscles work more than you know the re remaining other yeah. parts so when i play multi-sport it's it's an overall development and i feel uh, i don't need to go through the regular thing of doing a fitness for the sake of fitness you know uh, yeah, I enjoy playing the sport, and at the same time, it helps me stay fit. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, you know, when you do all these kind of sports, like, there's a goal towards it, like, and it's fun mm -hmm. as well, rather than yeah. obviously just exercising for the sake of it. But like, it's really fun playing mm -hmm. squash, badminton, and obviously table tennis as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's amazing. How, how tall are you, Sharaf? Do, do, do you know? I, how, I mean, I'm, one, I'm 185 centimeters. Uh, oh so, wow! Yeah. I'm yeah probably the tallest uh, Indian table tennis player. I I don't know if somebody else has been so tall. Uh, and yeah. the game style also. I'm I'm one of the few uh, Indian players who are very very attacking. Generally, people are more mm. you know they have good control. They play. They're pretty fast with their uh, hands. And I'm yeah. the only one who plays an unorthodox style. Hey, but but you know what? It works, and you look, you're doing really, really <laughs> well, by the way. And I'm sure yeah. you're probably gonna stumble your opponents because they're so used to maybe a bit more agile opponents. But you're gonna come in with that unorthodox style of play, and you'll throw <laughs> them off their game. And I think that's amazing. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, maybe we're well, talking about the game as well. I guess you know, do you have any like pre-game routine that you normally go into? before the game just to hype yourself up or just to get yourself ready yes um uh, as a yeah but it's a lot of things have been changing over the years yeah but there's one thing that stood common is like uh, i always uh, go to one particular corner in in a tournament you know like let's say the first day uh, mm -hmm. i'm i'm warming up in that corner so i generally stick with that corner for, with let's say with regards to my warming up or you know pre-match uh, routines uh, and over a period of time listening to music has also evolved let's say uh, when i was yeah. younger uh, at the age of 20 and 21 i used to listen to a lot of a lot of rock music you know back then my friends in uh, in college and university they had a, a rock band so i used to go to the shows and you know rock music was uh, the classic rock was you know uh, which uh, it influenced me a lot so I used yep. to listen to that at that point in time. Then I moved into Europe. Uh, a little bit of R and B and hip hop was, you know, I, that caught on to me. And as I can, I can clearly see that as I'm getting older, uh, I I just want to listen to music which is more 
calm and soothing more than mm-hmm. rather than you know which is like pumping me up so yeah, yeah. i think with age uh, that's something uh, taste changes and um, yeah i think the mindset also changes oh that's great and do you have maybe any favorite song right now maybe right now in the past few months or maybe past few years is there a go-to song for you any yeah. um soothing song uh the go-to song has always been acdc's uh, highway to hell or <laughs> yeah. you know thunder, thunder yeah. or T, tnt let's say yeah yeah more you know it's it's it starts off with the slow so acdc is something which is always okay i listen to two songs and then okay now let's mm-hmm. let's go on to acdc so you know mm, that's that, yeah, that, yeah, that will always yeah. be there yeah you still got to have the acdc no matter what yes. it's like it's like a drop that you got to have like without <laughs> it you won't perform well. yeah Yes. Fair enough. True. Fair enough. And uh, well, I guess now I'm just gonna really just start talking about maybe your career as a table tennis mm-hmm. athlete. Like, I want to maybe find out more about like what really kickstart your career, uh, mm-hmm. and what made you decide to really pursue table tennis professionally. I started the sport at a very young age. My father is my coach, so oh, he yep. used to take me along with him. You know, he was already coaching. Uh, yes. Even before he was born. So he used to take me to the club along with him, and uh, at the age of four, I I started knocking. You know, I still remember where my father or one of the assistant coaches or the elder kids will will like hold me up above the table, and I'm like mm. trying to hit <laughs> because I was yeah, yeah I was I was I couldn't be beyond the table. So yeah. that's how I started playing the sport, and uh, uh, by the time I I was 15 years of age. Uh, that was when i decided i want to be a professional player you know that was when mm. i decided okay i want to i want to focus on sport on table tennis and uh, have education as my secondary stuff because in india uh, most of them have education as the primary one and sports is you know secondary but yes, uh, yes. Uh, now things are changing uh, sports mm. has become a lot more professional these days but back then when i was in the 90s this is almost in the 90s uh, so uh, the while only when i was 15 I, I yeah when i was 15 i decided that i i want to be a professional player and uh, yeah uh, slowly started training two or twice a day uh, working on my body with physical fitness and that was that was a transformation which uh, happened and uh, but it took a while it took a while uh, for results to show for you know performances to come up for me to be in the national yeah. team it almost took me like four to five years before i could actually start playing for the national team so those uh, years i i still remember was was quite hard because i didn't know if i made the right decision you know getting into sport what will happen yeah. if i if i don't make it to the top so those you know those years were quite difficult but then yeah uh, by the time i was 20 i started playing for the national team and slowly i was doing very well at the international level also so started winning some international titles and and stuff and then i moved into europe because uh, yeah. playing in india uh, you know i was uh, there was limited infrastructure and there was limited number of players mm. who yeah. could you know play at the top level so i moved into europe started playing there uh, living there so it's almost yeah. like 14 years 14 15 years i lived in europe uh, traveled to india so i was my base was there so first four years I was in Spain, one year I was in Sweden, then nine, eight, nine, ten years I was in Germany. So uh, now I've come back home. You know, uh, I'm I'm more based out of India, and I'm traveling for the matches yeah. in Europe. So this is how it's been my career has been. That's great, and I guess right now it's very different as well. You were saying that obviously being based home in India. I, I guess you get to really spend more time with your maybe your family as well. Am I right? Is that better yes. for you? Yes, um, especially the last uh, one and a half years since the COVID break has happened. Um, I spent a lot of time. I have two kids. Daughter is t- ten years old, and uh, son is four years old. So really, you know, I I missed uh, their growing years, especially with my daughter. She's ten now, but I missed a lot of time. When you know when she was three, four, five, a lot of differences and uh, a lot of changes that happens at that point in time you know, mm. from the age of uh, two to five, and that I was lucky, fortunate enough to have the time back with my son now, and uh, yeah, um, for the family also, you know, not just my kids but also for my wife, for my parents, you know, people around 
more in town and uh, i can spend a little bit more time with uh, with all of them so which is which is something which uh, was not happening for almost like 15 years in my life mm. so uh, yeah on 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 one side the covid break has been uh, quite welcome uh, not just by me but i think by my family members also that's awesome man and i guess for your kids uh, obviously they miss seeing daddy at home a lot do they actually join you for like maybe the table tennis trainings have they actually picked up table tennis as well uh, my daughter doesn't want to come to the table tennis yeah. hall because she doesn't want the question of uh, when will you start playing like your father so yeah fair enough. i don't i don't want to be like my father you know so i don't i don't even want to come to the club uh, but my son you know boys they they like to have bat and ball and <laughs> they like yeah. to run around so he's there he's there uh, quite often in my training sessions and he is also playing with the other kids so uh, yeah let's see how i can take it forward with uh, son it's it's going to be difficult I, I i can say that it's going to be difficult because of course they are going to be in my shadows first and mm. secondly uh, having that role of you know of a father and and uh, and uh, a very good table tennis player balancing that and helping the kid grow at home that's going to be a bit difficult but yeah yeah fair enough. we can make it yeah yeah i'm sure you do great you you do great as a dad and yeah. both as a professional yeah. player as well i'm sure you're doing great sheriff yeah thank you <laughs> yeah and i guess you know looking back as well um you did mention before that you started you, you had it like maybe four to five years before you made the national team right mm -hmm. so you started representing india at about 20 do you mm. remember what it was like, like when you first wear, wore that Indian India jersey? How did it feel, and what is your experiences like? Yeah, um, uh, there were a lot of tournaments which happened in India, which still happen in India, and we used to see the players who who played for India, and you know them yeah. wearing those those official national team T-shirts and stuff. Yeah. They're like, wow, when when will I be? You know, can can I can I even get one? Uh, you know, just <laughs> one of them to have it in my wardrobe or you know, play with it. Um, so that was, you know, that was uh, binding, pushing me so much that uh, that I always felt like, okay, I want to be on the national team. And the day I was on the national team, and when they were distributing uh, the the kit, you know, the official kit, it was like, wow. I I first I just need to go to the go to my room and try them on you know just put it on me and then just look at myself in the mirror so yes. that was that was what I was thinking you know uh, and yeah let alone playing uh, playing with that kid but just having bringing that back to my room and putting it on and you know just uh, well back then I couldn't show it off to my family or anybody because we didn't have video calls and stuff. Mm. Uh, so I could just take some pictures uh, on my mobile phone and and have it with me. So I still have those pictures, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna really, say, really, like really, those really pictures cool. are really, yeah, those pictures are gonna be really, really valuable for you because yeah. those are pictures that you could probably frame up somewhere in your house because yeah. that's gonna mean a lot to you, I guess. Yes, yes, uh, more than me, I think. Uh, for my parents and my coach, yeah. for my father especially, because you know they had such big dreams with me, and when I made it uh, into the national team, they yeah. felt so proud. You know, it, wow. it, the the sacrifices they had done over so many years, and all that you know comes to you come to a point where you're satisfied with what you've done. So yeah. I think that's uh, that's that moment is pretty much priceless. Yeah. I can only imagine, but man, that's awesome. I can only imagine how, how you were smiling from year to year, seeing yourself in the mirror of that jersey. And obviously your parents, when you go back home and show them those pictures, they'll be like, son, you made it. And I bet they're so proud of you, man. I'm sure they're so proud of you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess another thing that I want to really know about as well is that, you know, when you obviously started really competing in table tennis as well, I think you were you had like a you have a record in the national table tennis championship in India, am I right? You're holding a record of like nine times. You you've won it nine yes. times, am I right? Yes, yes, nine times. Yeah, that's great, and that's I think that's really amazing. Do you think that there's anyone out there 
that might be breaking this record anytime soon? Uh, records are meant to be broken. Only then, you know. Uh, the, 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 actually, uh, when the person before me, he, mm. he done it, um, uh, Mr. Kamlesh Mehta, he had won yep. it for eight times. And the last time he had won it was in 1994. After that, he, he retired, he quit. And yep. it nearly took me 25 years. Uh, yeah. yeah, almost uh, 23, it, yeah. 24 years around, uh, to break that record. So it's going to take a while. Uh, there are a lot of mm. players who, who could do that, but uh, it is going to take a while. And I think uh, uh, it's, it's going to take a lot of dedication to get that record because it's, it's, it's consistent over so many years. So when I started winning the national uh, titles, I, I, I really didn't think I would break it. Because also, first, firstly, I have a lot of respect for Kamlesh Mehta. You know, um, he, uh, after his playing days, he became a coach. And I was, you know, uh, he, he was the coach in my first Olympic Games and a lot of other tournaments. So for me, he is uh, he's somebody who I look up to. So I never wanted to break that record, but it just happened uh, that I broke the record. And the first person who hugged me after breaking that record was him. He just wow. came down from the stage. I, I was just uh, celebrating. I was just, uh, you know, uh, walking around the thing, and he just ran in and he just hugged me and said, "Well done, you, you, you've made me proud." You know, when he said that, when that I've made him proud, it's like, wow. That that's, means that's everything to you. Yeah. Yes. yeah, for sure. That's crazy, yeah. and I guess like you. Have, Ever since then, you have also broken so many records as well in India in the table tennis mm. team. Like you, I think mm. you're one of the first Indian to have won a single gold medal, the singles gold medal yes. at a Commonwealth Games. Am I right? I mean, yes. like, so from all those records that you have, is there any one of it that is the most memorable for you? Or I think the, the most, I yeah. think I think the Asian Games uh, medals. Uh, we got yeah. two medals in 2018. First time in 62 years in uh, wow. you know, in the Indian history. That wow, we've got uh, medals, and uh, I made two medals uh, one in the men's team and one in mixed doubles. So, uh, yes, of course, when you look at the Cornell Games, we are getting that gold. Yeah, yes, it is, it is something special. But then uh, now, you know, looking back at the whole thing and getting an Asian Games medal where you have China, Japan, Korea, mm. uh, the, the strongest, the big uh, names, the big players. Yes. yes, so getting it there was like was i i still when i look at my medals uh, uh, shelf you know uh, that's that's the medal i always first look out for yeah that's that's still there <laughs> in that in that exact place you know it hasn't moved so good nobody's touching the medals so, but that's great yeah. yeah i can imagine how awesome is that gonna feel for you and obviously very very memorable so much dedication and hard work that you put in to actually mm -hmm. reach that level and I just want to say, good job, really, because I think you've made a whole lot of people proud and a lot of people are getting behind you, especially India as well, um, really hoping that you, you could really just continue breaking those records and inspire future generations. And I, I think that's really much. the beauty of sport, getting people together just to yes. support um, for the entire nation's pride and glory as well. And that's amazing. I guess in the recent Olympics, the recent Tokyo 2020 Olympics, there's just a question in my head that uh, I just want to throw at you. Um, but, mm. you know, because you actually really put up a really, really good fight at Olympics, especially mm. going against uh, Ma Long, you know, and obviously pushing it to five games. And I would say, I think on the third set, you were really close to winning the third one as well. Could, can you maybe just tell me more about the entire experience for you? Uh, how was it like and what was it like in the moment? Well, when I looked at the draw, I felt like, man, it can be a better draw, you know, at this Olympic yeah. Games. I've prepared really hard and we've, we've gone through really tough times in India with uh, the COVID uh, yeah. uh, problems with the second yeah. uh, wave we've had in 2021. Uh, despite all of that, you know, prepared quite hard. And when I saw the draw, I felt like, yeah, it can be better. But anyways, yeah. This is what it is. I can't. I can't change much. So, okay. If I can take uh, down uh, the top seed or the second seed, the, one of the best players, uh, you know, in the early rounds, it is possible. You know, if I have to beat uh, Malong 
or a Feng Sheng Dong or any of these top players in a quarterfinal or semi-final is going to be very, very difficult. So I need to get in there, be the first one in, and then try to, you know, put pressure on uh, on Malong. So I went in, uh, I started doing well. Uh, first set, uh, uh, I, I did well, but uh, yeah, Malong was better. Second yeah. set, when I came there and I continued to show that aggression, which yes. probably Malong didn't expect me to show, you know, because I lost the first set and then probably he thought I will uh, step it down. But I continued to show that aggression, going in for my shots. And, you know, at, at no point in the game did I, did I let him breathe, basically. I, I was always there. doesn't matter what he did. I, and already by the end of the second game, I felt like he's getting nervous. Actually, if you look at the commentary, uh, Adam uh, Bobro was, would, uh, would yeah. be saying that by the by the almost close to the third set, end of the third set. Ah, oh, I've never seen Malong like that. He's he's doing a lot of self talk and you know, he's a bit more pale and he was taking so much time. But already by the second set, I I, I could feel that and I said, okay, this is my chance. I need to do it now. Mm. And when I came to that situation on the third set, when I had my chances, of course. Uh, I went in for a few risky shots, you know, uh, probably if I just played them on table. I don't know, maybe Malong could have just whacked it back. Uh, so you never know. But I felt like the right choice was to go in for my shots, take that risk. And if I can put it on the table, you know, uh, then that's going to put him under tremendous pressure. I went in for the shots, but I missed them. I missed, uh, especially towards uh, the end of the third set, I missed a few shots where mm. When I look back at the video now, I feel like, wow, if, if that just landed on the table, it's it's a point, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah. Malong would not have got that. Uh, and then after the third set, he just gained momentum. He took the time out, you know, came out, gained momentum. Then just he just went bang on. Uh, so I felt very bad after that game. I, I put my towel on my head. The coach was like patting me and saying, well done. You did a great job today. But... Deep inside me, I feel like shit. I had my chances today, and I've 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 let go of that. Mm -hmm. Then I come back to the room, and uh, when I look at my messages on on WhatsApp and on Instagram yeah. and stuff, I feel like wow, is this what I've done on court? You know, people were so proud of what I did. Yes. People felt like that was a fight. You know, that was that is how we want to see uh, our Indian players out there. And mm. if you are able to drive the inspiration and show the other players the way that yes we are close to the best of the best players in the world probably not now probably two years later or five years later or ten years later we will be beating them because somebody has to show them that yes it can be done and yes. uh, yeah. you know that was something where which i felt completely accomplished after that olympic games uh, and i'm really happy that I, I I could actually get that out, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because the the difference between what I felt directly after the match and four hours after the match was like it was like a seesaw, you know. It was like I was here, and then all of a sudden I was like, wow, I've I've, I've done, you know, pretty much what I what I came here for. So I was happy. Yes. I had no regrets about the uh, preparation I had done and the way I had played, the way I had fought that match. Yeah. And if you go to like, you know, the YouTube um, Olympic channel and watch that game and you look at the comments, so many people out there are saying how you actually gave Malong a run for his money because he was actually really flustered in the second set when you won it. He was thinking, yeah. and that's why, you know, when you said like he took that time out and everything, it was, he actually, for a moment right there, I believe he thought like he might have actually lost it. So you actually gave a lot of hope and a lot of inspiration to <laughs> everyone out there like any young player that's coming up or anyone from india as well that's thinking of like picking up the bat and going for a round of training is really just yeah. showing them that the gap is not that far now it used to be really big but yes we're coming closer now it's, and, it's getting closer yes yeah and it's anybody's game at the end of the day so you never know and don't lose hope and i think what you shared earlier on you came into the yeah. game thinking that it's such a bad draw but you got to shake that mentality off you got to yes. keep thinking that you always have a shot at it and you did and yeah. you just do your best. And yes, I, I think exactly. that whole game itself is really just a example of how the, an athlete like yourself and any athlete from India or around the world always have that shot and that tenacity to always go at it. Whatever odds come in their way, 
they can overcome it. And you proved wow. that to us. So thank you for yeah. that. Like I, I got inspired from that. Thanks, Jamal. Well. <laughs> but you've you've actually put it in a very very nice manner. The way you you've summed it up, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, now I've got a question as well, which is basically about now that that Olympics have just finished, and obviously yeah. you're training for world champs and everything, yeah. you know. But are you planning to come back for the next Olympics in Paris, 2024? Um, well, yes, that is exactly what I. Um, I was not very sure uh, before Tokyo. Will I will I yep. be going in for the next Olympic Games? I was I was mm. not looking at it because you know it's a long time. But the way I plan, I had played, and you know, uh, and I'm uh, with my current shape. Uh, I would like to go in for Paris Olympic Games, but more as a medal prospect. You know, so uh, what I'm looking at is the team championships. So if uh, we missed out on on qualification in the team for Tokyo, yeah, and uh, we will try all our efforts to qualify as a team for Paris, and then you know, because it's just 16 teams, and if you are able to get that thing going in those uh, you know few days when the team championship start. You never know. Also, even if you make it to the quarterfinals, you know yep. that's something big. You know, India coming to a quarterfinals of the Olympic Games. This is already quite yes. big. Yes, so, that would be crazy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that would be great, uh, and that's really crazy. Yes, yes. So, so that is what uh, personally I'm looking at because that's the goal I would like to have. It's not just going in, play, play, be, probably playing the third round or the pre quarterfinals or you know the fourth round or something like that, but more like mm. I have a goal towards it. So, it's it, the goal should be big, so which will help me uh, be motivated to continue my work uh, with training and fitness and stuff. That's great. And I guess, you know, when you look at a team aspect right now in India, is there any rising stars that we should be really looking out for, uh, for all the table tennis fans around the world? Is there anyone in particular? In both the boys and girls, uh, there have been a lot of young players doing well. And even if you yeah. look at the recent times, all the uh, under 17 and under 19 Pro Tours, a lot of Indians were winning it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Personally, for me, there's Manav Tucker who's been doing extremely well uh, in mm -hmm. the boys and in the girls. There's Achana Kamath and Srija Akula uh, who did extremely well uh, here at uh, you know in uh, Doha at the WTT yeah. and the Asian uh, Championships and yeah. and Hungary. So there's there's a lot of uh, bright prospects uh, for India, and I hope you know. Uh, I've I've just said. Set them a benchmark. So this is this is what is yes. the minimum you guys need to do. So mm. I, and I'm pretty much sure they will they will go beyond uh, further ahead in the in the achievements they can do for India. Yeah, you're like the trailblazer. You went before, and they will see it as a possibility. So they'll go after you. I'm sure some of them might be, as I said before, breaking those records because you said that records are mm. meant to be broken, right? So we yes. might see one of those youngsters that you mentioned reaching that target and even more and maybe yes. even eventually getting a gold medal yes. at olympics yes. for india <laughs> yeah that's that's the goal yeah that's that is that is the dream of i think every athlete yeah yes getting a gold medal at the olympic games for sure well look um i i guess one a few last things i want to ask about is yeah. like right now what has your preparations be like like what are you aiming to achieve especially in the upcoming world champs in uh, Houston? Uh, world championships, my best has been round of 32. Uh, I've always, uh, I've made it uh, three to four, time, four times uh, in my career. So I'm yep. looking at uh, if I can make it to the uh, last 16 or to the quarterfinals. And with my current shape and form, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that I can make it. So yeah, fingers crossed. I hope uh, I, can, I can get that happening there. Uh, and apart from that, uh, I think uh, Commonwealth Games is coming up in, in a year from now. And then yep. there's also Asian Games that's coming up. So there are a lot of tournaments, uh, important tournaments that's coming up uh, for which we need to continue to, to keep the thing going ahead. Because uh, we've, we've been doing well over the last four or five years. And if we can continue to keep the the wheel moving, it's it's a lot easier, you know. So it's very, very important that uh, all of us are in good shape. Yeah, that, that's really good. That's really good. And I guess, first of all, really good luck for you for the rest of the uh, upcoming tournaments. I really hope you do well, you know, do India proud. And a lot of us 
over here at T2 and around the world, we are really behind you on this. We want to see you really make it, make it. And maybe if you ever face Ma Long again, you know, you're going to give him a good run for his money. I'm sure you will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. It, was, it was nice interacting with you guys. Yeah. And I guess maybe just one last thing to close off is like before we go, mm-hmm. is there, what is your motto in life or is there anything that you like to share to the future athletes who's chasing the dream, like what you're doing? Is there one thing that you can share to them? today yeah um in in my career uh, there in anybody's career i think there's there's a lot of ups and downs uh, so on on your way up you know you should always be careful that you will be going down and the same way yeah. when you're going down it's it's not uh, you know permanent mm. if you continue to work you will go back up so yeah. one motto which i always keep telling myself is when the going gets tough the tough get going so that's Great. something which I think the young ones will always have to, you know, keep keep it keep telling themselves. And of course, everybody's going going to go through a rough patch, but how strongly you come out of it is what uh, makes you, you know, get back to greater heights. For sure. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sharaf. Good luck for your upcoming you, tournaments, and to everybody out there, uh, this is the T two hot seat segment that we have where we're going to interview many different players from around the world um let us know if you would like us to interview any of the other athletes and if not look out for the next episode and we will see you again soon